Hey, Future Respiratory Therapist, big topic here. We're talking about airway graphics and you need to understand them. They can tell you a lot about your patient. They can tell you a lot about what's going on with your patient and you have to understand them, okay? So what I have for you on the board here is just three scalar graphics, okay? So these are just three, these are no loops. I'm gonna do another video with the loops. But for this video, I'm just simply talking about the scalar graphics. Now, what you need to understand is when you look at the pressure waveform, which is this one right here, okay? And before I get into this, let me just say this. When you graduate and you start working, don't have a bunch of numbers up on your ventilator screen. Be better than that and have your graphics displayed so that you can see from the door if there's a problem, you're not going to have time to spend five or six hours with every single patient, even a couple of hours with every single patient. So you're going to need to be able to recognize things from the door going, wait a second, this patient needs my attention now. How do you do that? By having your graphics pulled up. Your numbers, they don't tell you anything. They're just a number screen, okay? So show the nurses that you're a higher quality respiratory therapist and you know how to interpret graphics that they don't understand, okay? So the first thing is, is your pressure graphic. Now, when you talk about your pressure graphic, what you need to know is that your pressure graphic will tell you all of the pressures that you're concerned with, okay? So I'm gonna label them for you, okay? The first one is your PIP. That goes right here, okay? That's your peak inspiratory pressure. You need to know that pressure okay because that pressure matters all right now the second pressure you need to be able to note is your plateau pressure now you can only get your plateau pressure when you perform an inspiratory hold okay when you do so you'll get something like this and you need to understand that this is your plateau shortened as plat okay so you have your pip and your plat those two numbers by themselves make up the bulk of the airway resistance formula. PIP minus PLAT divided by liters flow in liters per second gives you your airway resistance. If the gap between PIP and PLAT increases, then you have an airway resistance problem. Okay, You can see this on your airway graphics. That's what they're there for. Okay, Now, the other thing the pressure will show you is your PIP. That's this line right here, okay? So here and here, these are PEEP. This is your positive end expiratory pressure. That's what it's there for, okay? Now, your last pressure that's important in understanding is your mean airway pressure. You need to understand this pressure because when you do, you'll understand how you can increase oxygenation for your patient. How do you find mean airway pressure? It's very simple. It's the average of every single pressure there is. So it's all of this. All of this underneath your pressure waveform equates to your MAP, your mean airway pressure, okay? Now, the only other thing that this pressure waveform is, is really beneficial in is understanding when your patient is triggering or not triggering the ventilator. If you see a negative deflection like you do here, that's a patient trigger. If it's flat and it just rises, then the patient did not trigger that breath. It's a time-triggered breath. In, initiated by the mode of ventilation that you're in okay now this gets deeper we can talk about asynchrony and stuff like that but this is the basic pressure waveform I'm not getting into asynchrony right now okay this is the basic pressure waveform you need to be able to talk about pip plat peep mean airway pressure and recognizing when your patient is triggering a breath the diaphragm drops the pressure drops and then the breath is initiated, okay? That's the pressure waveform. Now the next waveform we're gonna talk about is the flow. 
Flow waveform, what you need to know is that it comes in several different patterns, okay? You can have decelerating, like we do in this illustration. You can have square, which would look something like this. You could have accelerating, which could look something like that. Or you could have sinusoidal, which would look something like this, okay? So square, accelerating, which you'll hardly ever see. I don't know if I've ever seen it, actually, to be honest with you. Sinusoidal, which is common with spontaneously breathing patients, and decelerating, which is common with machine breaths. Okay, now you can switch this from decelerating to square, okay, but generally it's not a big issue. Just know the difference and know that you can see them in different forms and different fashions. Now, after you recognize what pattern it is, you need to recognize how to troubleshoot it. The flow waveform should return to baseline on exhalation. That's what's happening right here. Okay? There's no gap here, right? But when you look at this next breath, this breath does not return to baseline before the next breath. And that gap on flow every single time is air trapping okay if it's happening consistently you need to give your patient more time to exhale you do that by either increasing your flow so that you decrease eye time you can decrease your tidal volume to decrease eye time or you can decrease your rate which will increase total cycle time now typically we do this with flow because Rate and tidal volume will alter your minute ventilation. If you decrease minute ventilation, you increase CO2, which will decrease pH. Okay? So for typical sakes, the answer here is increasing flow. That should get you enough E time to get your lungs completely empty. Now, the last scalar graphic is volume. When we talk about volume, you need to recognize that the volume you have set when you're in volume control mode of ventilation should equate to what you have here. So if you have 500 set, this should reach 500 and it should exhale back ballpark 500, okay? If you ever see a time where the 500 goes in but volume doesn't return, to baseline then you have one of two problems your patient is either air trapping or they have a leak in the system somewhere maybe it's an active pneumothorax maybe it's a leak in the circuitry it's something that's causing a leak now how do you know if it's air trapping or if it's a leak the answer is you go back to your flow and if your flow is returning to baseline, but your volume is not, then you have a leak. If your flow is not returning to baseline, and neither is your volume, now you're talking about air trapping. Okay, basic scalar graphics understanding. You got to know them. You got to be able to interpret them, and you have to be good at them. Good luck, guys.